Hey everyone, welcome back. So, <clears throat> I have some slight throat issues today. Let me check once if I have connected my mic to proper system. Okay, that's done. Okay, where were we? So basically we were able to we were able to push um, the edit expense part. I think this has some issues. Let's to edit let's remove this and make it a constant value of true because this is not helping us and we can get rid of this toggle okay now once we are back Um, this is true so we need to okay we are making this as false that's fine let me check whether we are able to add a new thing done no log expense this looks good doc 13 13.31 and then done and we have the log here now if I go and want to edit it I would say 12 12 and if I save and go back this has to get updated so we were stuck here <coughs> so I think we're still getting that the save should actually pop out so let me check swift UI pop your controller on button tap dismiss view controller programmatically so presentation mode where winding presentation mode wrapped value dismiss so this is detail view this is root view so root view gives it to detail view This is an example of the new environment variable documented in beta 5 which was using a value property it's changed in later beta to wrapped value. Now current for GM version the exact same concept works to dismiss model view presented with the sheet modifier. So let's just see what this does. I'm not sure what the syntax is but <coughs> um, learn <coughs> what are environment variables and presentation mode so this we need to learn and what I will do is okay now next what we 
in the action this is dismiss um, I'm not sure we need dismiss okay from the example he says so wrapped value dismiss one eleven save yes that is working that's good so now what we need to do is to cancel we'll just go back and <coughs> okay so this is done so what are environment property wrapper environment value dynamic environment key presentation mode binding with presentation mode so this is supposed to be is presented then dismiss indicates that view is currently presented dismisses the view if it is currently presented if presented equal to all dismiss is a no operation okay this is good this is as simple as it is so <coughs> where does this come from this come from environment values a binding to the current presentation mode of this particular view so basically <coughs> OS X unavailable and watch OS unavailable edit mode okay. it's available in 10.15 but we are not in 10.15 okay so what environment variable does is there is a inbuilt value for presentation mode so this is of type struct so it's binding to that so if you add it to any of this view so this contains whether this view is presented either through sheet or through <coughs> so are updated by swift ui framework in this case every view will have this if we need to make use of it below is the syntax okay so this is the syntax <coughs> and for presentation mode variable presentation mode we need to call wrapped value dismiss so this wrap value is again a swift going non mutating set so the value referenced by the binding assignments to the value will be immediately visible on reading assuming binding represents a mutable location but the view changes they cause but the view changes they cause may be processed asynchronously to the assignment okay in case the view changes this is handled asynchronously so this wrapped value contains the actual value of the presentation mode which was bound here okay use the variable wrapped value 
to dismiss. Okay. So in that case, okay, we need the other one for sure. Okay, now how do I refresh? the previous this one refresh view list on view did appear reload or update views there's no built-in method to reload us so I'll do a reload inside call set needs display mm -hmm. I didn't get it this is in Swift. I don't need this. Refreshing a Swift UI. I'm trying to refresh the list whenever I click a navigation link. The list is made out of an array. It does only refresh when I switch to other tab or close the app. Okay, we have not yet dived into observable object and pass through subject all these things. So this is all completely combined framework. So let's not get into the rabbit hole. We'll just I had the similar problem. This is a hack I came up with in your test view state needs refresh is equal to true. Pass this into your detailed view such as this one. Note the accent color. Refresh to force the refresh when okay. if we can work around with that so what he says is in the content view add a state variable says needs refresh and this is bool and it's false and pass this here and make it a bindable object force refresh and bool so self dot dollar needs refresh okay fix first refresh
okay something went wrong log expense and here is thing we don't need environment variable so we'll go with display self display self for now we are giving constant true needs refresh self dot dollar log mode is edit and expense to edit is exp and this should work and it doesn't okay this is supposed to be bool and there is no error now according to him then in your detail view in your button action and needs refresh toggle okay so here dot constant false Okay, so this is done and in log expense we need to add again it's constant false okay so now before dismissing we need to toggle this person so self dot force refresh dot toggle okay now this is force refresh toggled here when it comes back to force a refresh on the net refresh is changed I don't think it should be this complex maybe we are missing something on this part I'm not sure but this should not be this complex let me see self dot needs refresh and then do the operation else um, I think we need to fetch it based on the UUID 
so when I say expense dot ID I need to filter so let X is equal to uh, example expenses dot filter and containing the declaration cannot be used inside a function builder okay what else to do Should I pass needs refresh here? But will that work? Because expense row no, this is a struct, so this is copy by value not reference so it will have the old value with it so it won't but we need to update this somehow with the new value so we have to filter it out so this is right but we need something filter ex x in exp dot id is equal to e dot id if that is the case return true else return false Okay, this can be done in a single line. So we can do this in a single line with dollar zero filter dot first. So we filtered out that particular ID which matches the one and then the first one out of that. So here is a list and if I change this particular item, um, we are updating the item here at that particular index and we are toggling the force refresh which in turn triggers this and if this needs refresh then we are giving the expense so let's see I seriously doubt this will work let's go with the first one say one two three one two three and just save it yes and we got it still it's 
still um, unsure why we need this. I know needs a refresh. Hmm. So we don't know how many times this gets called. If this gets called every time. Let's see, let's revert this back to one and save. Okay, we have to hit enter to get that value and save two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. Okay, we made, I think it is looping in here. So better to give a print statement here. Needs refresh. and then we can build failed we can't print inside We'll see how many times it comes here. So save it came once, twice, thrice. Okay. So it's printing everything. So sorry, it's reloading everything. Hmm. I thought Swift UI does that. Let's do one thing. Let's go through. Once we integrate the combined framework, I think all this should go out. For now, we will keep it as it is. Once combined framework comes into the picture, then we can relook at it. So. to do needs refresh is a hack once combined framework is integrated relook at this and try to eliminate the usage so basically from subscribe observables and subscribe so the reactive way of programming should actually work here once we integrate into combine so okay so that's that um, now we have this just say save and it comes back to this okay now expense row expense total view so this will update along with the command framework we don't need to do much things so today's focus would be so now that we have completed this
today's focus should be to do a login screen and I'll take a break now I'll have some water and then we'll continue on I think we have some time we have another 30-40 minutes at our disposal uh, we'll do the login framework a login screen basically so once login screen is there we can log in get the data so tomorrow we'll be connecting to backend from the login part we'll call the apis we'll store the tokens and then we'll connect all these things together so right now we have the basic ui working for us so today's main topic would be this is the feature depth feature implementation that we had carry forwarded from yesterday so today today's work is yet to begin okay I'll be right back Okay. So the next thing would be in the content view instead of this navigation entire thing so this should be only after login if it's not locked if it's not logged in it should show the login screen and based on some parameters or some values which are stored in the application it should decide 
here whether to show login screen or this list so what we'll do is we'll move all of these things into another view so let's keep this as a base view and we'll say logs list view expense list view or logs list view anything so swift ui for ios so expenses expense list view okay so we will be moving all of this okay in here okay and then we need to move this part in here okay now once this is done so expense list view has to be populated from here as of now there should should not be any change in the way app works the first screen is there it's working when I click here expense should come cancel go here save comes here so there is no change so everything works as it is okay cool so we have moved it into a separate view here expense list view and from here it takes care so this is as simple as it is so we have moved now time for us to create a new view for our login screen there won't be any sign up screen for now so login takes username and password so that would be as simple as this and we will add it like this automatic restack unable to infer the type okay we don't need this part we'll get rid of this for a minute and there are spaces padding log expense login okay still there are some values needed to be added here so i think we need um, variable username which is of type string and password which is of type string and i think we need to 
bind it to this so we'll bind the password for this and we'll bind the username <coughs> this has to be secure text field username enter your username here enter the password here I'm here enter the password here so still it is giving error I need a vertical stack this okay it's a state private variable why is it throwing error it's not throwing error so this was the issue okay cool so let's just see um, of this we can say login view here and just work on it now we will be able to see the login screen but there is no navigation bar okay so for that so log expense so it has to be embedded in the navigation view indent it and run login and there needs to be a button after this so button with we have added buttons to this let's use the same thing So a simple button 50y button with action. Okay. Let's just copy that and see if we can add it here. Okay, now here login at state private where. false login dot toggle show details has no member show details okay this is login okay
we need to update something in content view so that it displays the expense list okay dot accent color system blue do we have let's see background border shape style so swift ui border shape style text color border color red overlay Okay. Width is three hundred pixels. Height is forty four and alignment is dot center. What do we have? Bottom leading, bottom trailing, leading, I have it leading. Let's just go ahead and see the canvas. So it's helpful in these cases at least. Preview stop, <laughs> resume. Both succeeded. Okay. So alignment leading if we give alignment center comes here border color is blue two pixels dot foreground color How do I make it center align? Alignment dot center does this. No, that doesn't have alignment, cannot infer alignment in the call. Okay, this is in the V stack. In the V stack, it has to be. Hmm. So,
this looks good instead of border what if I give overlay background button background color how do I change the background color of a button text padding action okay there is no back Okay, we have this now. We can give salmon. Color with RGB space. If we had hex value, then it would have been really really good I'm not sure why Apple doesn't give RGB values so now we need to go color in RGB values This looks good. Okay. What is a half of two fifty five? One twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah. So one dot zero point five point five. Not zero point five and point five. Oh, my bad. So this has to be dot white, and this has to be color. Okay, shall we make it blue? No black looks fine but white looks more yellow no what's our color in our expense manager let's see let's have some branding although that is secondary to the functionality Okay, this is blue. Login. I wanted to keep this color, so that's why I came up with this. Half of sixty, half of one twenty-seven is 
and this is 127 plus 64 will be 191 Nah, 240, 250, 55, 100, okay, so the green one would be 100, 100 is almost say point four yeah or point three five point five point three Let's just keep it point five. I think if we reduce this both, okay, let's keep it as it is. And now this is spacer, this is something. Let's see how our login screen looks. So this has to be separate. login dot toggle why didn't we queue login dot toggle okay on action so there needs to be some action taken so we'll get rid of this and we'll add it here get rid of this we don't need things okay the button still works so now we need to send something locked in successfully so at state where login status or say is logged in bool equal to false so this will be updated if self dot is locked in then show this else show this okay function to close the opaque type but has no written statements in the body Okay, we can do one thing. We can get rid of this, this, and we can make a ternary operator out of this. Okay. 
you cannot convert the expression into a written type of some view shall we just say return no it doesn't take that too hmm. this is tricky the content we What if where do I put on appear? No, not on this. the way we did needs refresh so let's just go to the login screen and let's just have a binding property where is logged in which is a bool and on this is logged in toggle so on toggle it should come back here so let's just pass it here dot constant false the content view self dot is logged in okay this makes sense but what if when it returns hmm on appear if self dot is locked in <coughs> sorry expense list view oh. okay back to swift ui view body should return either based on a condition conditionally use view yeah this is exactly what I need trying to figure out a correct way to conditionally include a view in the Swift way I wasn't able to use it directly oh wow 
to avoid using the extra container like a stack is to annotate your body property as view builder ah like this this is exactly what I was looking for thanks using this way yes so so this becomes a view builder and okay If I say login it should come here so and there is no way out awesome okay now this is done so we need to add a secure text field so username enter user username password enter your password do we have a secure field secure field okay This is test. This is test. Okay, and everything works as as it is. Okay. perform login operation and then toggle only if it's success okay So what do we have? Perform login. So this is one thing. So this is hack. This will be removed once we have combined framework, and then we have a to do here. Turn button to be disabled if the values are not valid. Workaround is added for now. Pop to root view controller on save. This is done. Learn. This is done. Yeah. So our awesome app, <laughs> yeah, our awesome app is ready. So this is a bit ugly. I'm not sure. Split in line. Say login. So here it is in line, and I click here. It is again in line. So the space is waste. Okay. Can't help. It's pretty much Apple. Okay. So now that we are done here for today that was a good run for today tomorrow let's just integrate with our backend we'll see I'll do some homework and we'll try to integrate with the backend APIs for login and then to fetch the expense list and then add delete and so 
basically so here connect so let's just make us another new this one iOS so we need um, connect login form to backend on faith be there on pass move to expense list screen okay done now connect ios then we have fetch expense list from using APIs connect login UI with login API fetch expense list add expense API then we have edit then we have delete expense API what else we have okay and if okay store token token and time interval if authentication and authorization store token and time interval on launch calculate calculate the time remaining and show appropriate screens okay make token accessible to network apis if token time is expired then show login screen make the token accessible to network apis okay these are the tasks we have and today is wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday so we have three days basically so once we have I don't think we can complete it by this weekend because of lot of unknowns we don't know anything about combined APIs combined framework so let's just see what happens Thank you guys for watching, let's catch up tomorrow.